I got a question for you. Why are you trading your time for money? Based upon all of the YouTube advisory boards, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, that is the stupidest way to make money, to actually trade your time for money. You should get into trucking. Take some money, buy a truck, hire a driver, and just sit back and collect your passive income. Or maybe you should set up an Etsy store selling digital art and collect your passive income. Or better yet, create a YouTube automation channel where you're not making videos, you have a team of subcontractors in India, Indonesia, Ecuador, wherever, and you just sit back and collect money while you're not doing anything. All right. As you could tell, I was being extremely sarcastic and fallacious because I see a number of information online, blogs, YouTube videos that talk about setting up passive income where you get money for absolutely doing nothing because you set up some type of passive income revenue stream. I got a theory. I have a theory. I don't feel that the people who are putting out this information about passive income revenue streams, I'm gonna explain that in a minute, are actually setting up passive income revenue streams. I've literally seen uh, someone, I'm not mentioning any names, say that they have 12 revenue streams that make them like $30,000 a month and they don't have to do anything. Now, incidentally, I noticed that this content creator's videos got more outrageous and extreme and their views were going down. So if you got 12 passive income revenue streams, why are you changing up your YouTube content? Just a thought, just a thought. So one of the things, I've done a few videos about trucking which was sold as passive income. And this whole create some type of passive income to get a high revenue stream. There was one YouTuber who got into the YouTube automation and uh, he's called the Black Hustlers Club. I thought he did an excellent video on creating YouTube automation because he's been doing YouTube automation for, at the time he made that video, I think six months. And he, he did not make, he made money, but he did not make money above and beyond the money that he invested in his passive YouTube automation channel. So at the moment, he may be making money now because I thought it was a really well done video. Once again, it's the Black Hustlers Club and he really put a lot of time and effort into it. He hired a team and it's working because honestly, honestly, I feel that the reason it's working is he's a successful YouTuber and he has insights and wisdom on how to set up YouTube videos to make them go viral because this is my biggest problem with YouTube automation. They make it seem that you can go out and just create some regular videos, create a YouTube channel, and they're gonna take off. Last time I checked, because I know there are more, <clears throat> last time I checked, there was 32 million active YouTube channels, active meaning that they put up one video per week. And during this time frame, I was looking up these numbers, out of these 32 million, only like 10% of the 32 million got over a thousand views per video. So, and also when I looked it up, there was 342,000 YouTube channels with subscribers over of 100,000 100, subscribers. So you've got 32 million YouTube channels, but only not even 10%. It's not even 10%. 10% would be 3 million YouTube channels with over 100,000. That would be around 10%. So it is less than 10%. So creating a YouTube channel to get over 100,000 subscribers 
is something that takes work, effort, consistency. You got to have the right niche. It's got to right. You know, there, there's a lot of things that go into that. So, statistically, to create a YouTube channel that gets views, that gets subscribers, is pretty hard. I've never been a big YouTuber. Uh, my YouTube channel is quite small, and since I revamped stuff, my views have gone down. And one of the things that I learned early, 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 early in the YouTube game was it's better to sell something from your YouTube channel than to sit back and wait on your YouTube channel to keep accelerating. Now, there are some YouTubers out there making 20, 30, 40 million a year. I am not one of them. I don't make that kind of money from my YouTube channel, but I do make really good money from my business that's attached to my YouTube channel which kind of gets into where we need to be in the conversation that we need to have because there's a ruse of these things and these systems that you could start to go ahead and create passive income. Um, I've had passive income. 2016, 17, 18, when I was doing heavy consulting, um, my online courses were selling and I wasn't pushing them. I wasn't promoting them. I just had them listed under the YouTube channel and I did six figures, passive income. I didn't do anything. I built the YouTube courses. I didn't really do anything. But here's the thing. The passive income thing is very elastic because for you to go ahead and create a passive income revenue stream, whatever that may be, because there's there's literally a ton of them out there according to other people there's a ton of them out there that you can literally set up 30 minutes few hours and consistently get these big checks right without doing anything and let me go ahead and tell you a story let me tell you a story and also you want to be sure to watch this video from the beginning to the end because there's going to be a lot of stuff in it that's going to benefit you Everything that I have done has taken work, has taken me actually trading time for money. Literally everything that I've done at the front of that was a situation where I was trading time for money. Right now, let's go ahead and talk about right now. Um, right now, I revamped the YouTube channels. I revamped my online training and since I'm an experienced technician and doing this stuff, I knew that I was going to take a huge hit. I knew from rip that I was going, and to be honest, the hit wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Let me explain to you. Once I started revamping stuff and pissing people off and putting up different content, changing the channel name, I knew I was going to run a lot of people off. I knew I was going to run a lot of people off. And honestly, the revamp has been going on March 15th, April 15th, this month, we will be two months into the revamp. And once again, I had a lot of people leave, you know, it's like, hey, you're not putting up the content I want to see, I'm not going to be around. That's fair enough. Um, but this month, I am literally on my other channel, I've come out of the negative subscriber phase in this month, I'm going to come out the negative subscriber phase of this channel. So, but once again, here's the point. Everything that I have done has been a recipe of hard work, activity, and building, and creating, and doing these things. Because I will say that people are getting way, way smaller. I saw this video where they were talking like this kind of goes into passive income and talks about YouTube. And this guy was talking about the girl who's quite attractive. That's a point. Who's quite attractive. She did three videos and got a million subscribers. You know, the girl with the van and the little white snake, her name was Elena something. And the people in the comment sections just toasted this video. Oh, so let me get this straight. So if I can replicate being a hot chick on YouTube, because see, th this is something that I have known for years. There's a girl, she's 
Swiss, I think, or Norwegian. She's in a different country because she has an accent. And she's blonde, she's blue-eyed, she has a very nice body. And she has a video of her backing up a truck. That's the video. This is how I back up a truck. It has like 340,000 views. And if you are a really handsome male, or you're a really attractive woman, that gives you tremendous benefits on YouTube. Tremendous benefits. And these people were like attacking, attacking, attacking. Cause you know, essentially, if you were a regular looking person and you made the same videos that Janelle Elena made, you would not get the views. You just simply wouldn't. And what I think is people are starting to wise up to poppycock content. Because I would never come on here and say, hey, you know, you could be like Janelle, you could get a million subscribers between uh, three videos. Now also, another thing is van life. I want you to do this little exercise. Go up to the YouTube search bar and put in van life. And go ahead and look at the videos of van lifers, right? And notice that the van lifers who are attractive have way more views than the van lifers who are not attractive. Go ahead, just do a little simple test. I guarantee you and come back to this video and it will blow your mind at how attractive people can be doing normal, regular things and get amazing views. Just doing regular, normal stuff. But back to the content. Once again, you know, in the beginning, I was being completely facetious because, you know, let me explain to you what I'm going through with the revamp. I revamped the YouTube channels. I revamped my content. I'm revamping my corporation. And being of sound mind and body, I knew I was going to take a hit. I, I just knew it. But here's the thing. The hit wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because honestly, I thought I was going to be going through it for about six months to maybe a year. And this is one of the reasons it took me so long to actually make the reset. But literally, I will be kind of close to being back on track in about three months, which really isn't a long time for the things that I do. And why am I having this conversation with you? I'm talking about activity. I'm talking about doing things. I'm talking about getting busy. I'm talking about trading time for money. Uh, trading, yeah, trading time for money because essentially I've seen so many people talk about it is simple, it is easy to set up some type of passive income revenue stream. Let's take real estate. I've seen tons and tons of people go out and get in real estate and I've seen tons and tons of people fail at real estate, literally fail. You don't just buying a piece of real estate. That's not the deal. Uh, the real estate trapper had put that out because there's so many people who, cause once again, th this is just me. So you go out, you get an additional mortgage, you get a piece of real estate, you put a renter in there. And after you pay the bank and the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance, you have a positive cash flow of 150 to 300 dollars per month. Let's go ahead and annualize that. So we're talking about 1800 dollars to 3600 dollars positive cash flow for a year and you have gone out. Now this is the thing. This is the fortunate thing. The credit bureaus, my FICO scores, you get hit hard for using your credit cards but you don't get hit hard for a car loan and you don't get hit hard for a mortgage and you don't get hit hard for a big loan. So you can go out and get these multiple properties and have them on your credit report. And as long as payments are being made, nothing really bad gonna happen to you and your credit score is not going to crash. However, this is one of the things I see cause like I'm here in Atlanta, I love, love going to Zillow every day and finding what I call a failed Airbnb. This is a fully furnished property with little slippers by the bedroom, cookies and coffee on the kitchen countertops, and they will rent you this home that is fully furnished for 8,500 bucks. 
or is fully furnished for 9,000 books or fully furnished for $30,000. They will rent this to you. And I feel that part of this is the real estate marketing department on YouTube has influenced these people that someone is gonna come in and pay $9,000 to $30,000 for a regular house because it's fully furnished. Because it has is fully furnished in there. It's fully furnished. Uh, a person can move in that house and buy brand new furniture and be spending between twelve and twenty thousand dollars for the year to get that kind of furniture to stock it out. So, what I'm saying is. The passive income guidelines are very, very flawed because they make it seem that you can go out and do simple, easy, roundabout stuff and break open the bank. Just break the bank open. Just be making money hand over fist. And I will say this because once again, I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not going to point you to any YouTube channels because you know, once again, my hats goes off to any content subscriber who has figured out a way to manipulate the YouTube algorithm to make money. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is that the average person isn't financially literate to know that this stuff is poppycock. Now, I will say I've been seeing this. I'm starting to see aggressive commentary to these videos that are talking about you can make passive income you can set up a passive income stream quite easily and the people are starting to go like that ain't really in the cards man they ain't really in the cards because i call them high income ruses because literally there are there's a ton of youtubers like i said i'm not mentioning the names not pointing you anywhere that literally put out that you can make 300 to a thousand dollars a day doing these side hustles and let me go ahead and be a hundred percent clear these content creators let's call them content creators are not doing the side hustle but they're making a video they're putting out information that you 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 should do the side hustle to make that 300 to a thousand bucks per day or you could go ahead and set up a passive income income stream doing simple easy and ordinary things let me say this again they're going out there because this is the pitch hey guys today i've got a great passive income revenue system for you it is simple it is easy and anybody in any place in the world can do it and you work when you want to it's one of the things that you can set up and that's how it's sold my book which took me four hours a day monday through friday sometimes monday through sunday working on that for three months straight having to edit it not once but twice going through that whole stuff i would say my first six months of that book were hell from an activity standpoint from a editing standpoint from putting it out and once I got that book finally edited and I settled down into the selling phase, I made, I'm going to say semi-passive because I was advertising the book on YouTube and the, I had a blog and people were finding the blog and every time auction hunters or storage wars had like a stream of back to back, I would wake up with a lot of money in my merchant account because a lot of people went to the online and they started looking for how to get in storage auctions and they found me. So was that passive income? 100% no, because I was actively marketing the book. I was pointing people to Amazon. I was writing a blog. I was creating it. That was the farthest thing away from passive income. Wasn't even close to passive income. But if I was less ethical and I just wanted to gas you guys up, and like, hey, let me bring it to you. Like I wrote a book and I stuck it on Amazon. I didn't do nothing else. You know, I'm gonna leave out the fact that I was making YouTube videos. I'm gonna leave out the fact that I was writing a blog. I'm gonna leave all that out and just like, hey, 
You write a book, stick it on Amazon, and you can develop passive income and you don't have to do nothing else in life. You know, um, one of the things that gets me is this push that the average, regular, and normal person can easily establish a passive income revenue stream, which I 100% don't think that that's possible because I have had passive income revenue streams that have come after an incredibly large amount of hard work. That passive income was at the end of the hard work. It wasn't that, it, it wasn't like I just woke up and rolled over and was like, I'm gonna create a passive income stream today. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And then four hours later, I've got my passive income stream up and it's making money. It, it has never worked out like that for me. It has never worked out like that for me. Like, once again, I'll share some of the stuff with you. I have big plans for December, 2023. But for those big plans to manifest at the end of 2023 in December, I gotta start working now, which is hard work, which is, um, because I'm using the system uh, that I'm giving, I'm teaching a course about, I'm using this system to build out, to create these revenue streams, which are active. They're not passive. They're not, they're not, they're, they're not even close to passive. And, you know, I think based upon what I'm seeing that the average YouTube viewer, because this is where I see a lot of this stuff, is getting sick and tired of being lied to once again i'm not going to mention any youtuber names i'm not going to mention any because some of these guys you know it is hard work to build an active durable youtube channel that gets hundreds and sometimes millions of views per video that's hard work so i'm not going to denigrate or downgrade these guys they figured out a way to make their channel work i will say that we're going to reach an epiphany i feel in the next two to three years where that stuff is just not going to work. People are at the point where if you're going to lie to me, if you're going to um, play around with my emotions, if you're going to mess with me, they're, they're, they're just not going to tune in, in my opinion, in the next two to three years. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I just don't see it because I, like, I've been watching the erosion of viewership on a lot of these people who come out and it's like, Hey, you can go ahead and create an affiliate marketing system like I did. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Just go ahead, find the right product and start promoting it. And these are people with active YouTube channels. And that, that's another scam. If you go to someone who has an active YouTube channel, and I'm like, once again, active can be in a lot of things. If you have to write affiliate marketing links under your YouTube videos, like say your channel, you get 30,000 views a month, right? Which is really small YouTube channel, but you've got affiliate links that when someone buys and goes ahead and gets it, you make 500 bucks. I know of a YouTube channel that has a passive, an affiliate link system like that on his YouTube channel. He doesn't get a lot of views, but he makes almost $20,000 a month. So, but it's a very technical, very niche channel, which brings a different audience. So it works. So if you have an active YouTube channel, you have an active TikTok page, you have an active Instagram page, you can make a lot of money with passive income. I mean, affiliate marketing, not passive income, affiliate marketing, which can kind of seem like passive income. But here's the thing. Would you get this passive income if you didn't make the video? The answer is no. So it's not entirely passive income. It ain't even close to passive income because you have to go out and make videos and put your thing up there for people to know what you're doing for people to be able to take advantage of what you're trying to sell them. Whether it's passive income, your own online course, all this other stuff. But yeah, I think we're at a point where people are in this I think is starting to bring in a real recession because, you know, once again, I look at the economic numbers, I look at the indicators. Technically, we're not in a official recession, 
but sector wise with tech tech has suffered a lot of layoffs trucking is way way down so there are signs that we're on our way to a recession possibly because you know I, i'm not 100 percent certain on that because it looks recession wise it looks very recession wise but we may not have a recession in 2023 the recession may be starved off to 2024 don't know don't know because there's a lot of things in those numbers that you have to evaluate now why am i talking about recessionary things because when we have a recession a lot of people pull back on their spending which creates even more recessionary measures and it makes it real hard to create one of these revenue streams there's a guy that i'm watching and he sells digital art on etsy and he's got it set up where last month his second month he did 875 dollars gross revenue and after all his expenses came out he made 422 dollars and he just has this digital art store on etsy where he really wasn't doing anything and that month he made passive income i was to give him that but here's the thing i think there are things you could put together you can go out and buy dividend stock and that stock pays you a dividend you have 100 percent made passive income but let's talk about making passive income which is doable and making enough passive income to live the life that you want now that gets to be a little different that gets to be a different different kind of animal because when you're talking about making passive income to live we're talking i'm gonna i'm gonna just put a number out there we're talking about five thousand a month if you go out and create a revenue stream that makes you five thousand dollars a month that's pretty good that can support you in most of America. Can't support you in New York, can't support you in California, you will struggle greatly there. But most of the country, that would support you, including Florida and other areas. But when we start getting to $5,000 a month, when we start getting to $10,000 a month, when we start getting to $20,000 a month, that's when these passive income schemes, I'm gonna call them schemes, that's when they start falling apart because there's a number of things that you can do online that will get you five to a hundred bucks per month. There's a number of things, but are they really worth doing? Are they really, really worth doing? You know, because I look at this stuff and I see this stuff and I'm just like, all right, so I can do all that. Like, uh, those, once again, this guy with the digital art, he didn't, because he was moving and stuff. He made $421, and if he continued to do that for the whole year, that would be a $5,000 in additional income, which I think for an average person is quite significant. So you're seeing all this other stuff, and this is one of the reasons that people are looking at ChatGPT. I am an official member of ChatGPT, and let me go ahead and say this. I feel that people think that ChatGPT and all this AI information stuff that we have access to, let's go ahead and make that. Is there AI stuff that's super fragilistic, like calidosis? Yeah, there's amazing AI stuff that corporate America has access to. But what do we have access to? Everything that we have access to is limited. So I think in two to three years in the future, we will be where people think that we already are with chat gpt and other ai artificial because the whole thing is making it easy to get things done making it easy to use these things making it easy to do things right so that's one of the things we're seeing and this is why everyone is going crazy with chat gpt uh, there was a guy who put out he created a business he was using chat gpt he built his website and he was selling some stuff and I could be wrong because I'm not in the space. I don't know how many Airbnb owners out there, but he was selling some for Airbnb owners. And I was like, that's not a huge market. That's not a huge market in my opinion. Then again, I could be wrong. I don't know how many Airbnbs are owned out there, but I would not, you know, cause for the whole month he made like, 
1700 euro which means he's in another country and um i don't know i'm gonna just say i don't know but one of the things that is happening and this is one of the big pushes behind artificial intelligence is it makes you to able to do things and i'm going to say this uh i use chat gpt4 to do a lot of things i use it but what i find what what i have found out is the end product in my opinion is not worthy enough to create a blog to write a book to put these prompts out they're just because there's a certain look when you start heavily getting heavily invested into chat gpt and these other things you can actually read a website and like that was chat gpt because it has a certain look and feel to it until that certain look and feel disappears you're just not going to be able to um have a lot of stuff in my opinion once again this is my opinion that people are going to want to actually read or be part of because Frankly, the average output of ChatGPT, unless you have the right prompts, and once again, I'm a beginner at this. This may change as we go forward, but once again, I'm a beginner at this. But it's all about the prompts, it's all about the system that you put in, and I have actually utilized ChatGPT content, and it has completely failed. And then I sat down and went ahead and wrote my own articles, and they started converting. So, once again, it could be a prompt issue, but you know, we, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But yeah, man, this whole chat GPT, this whole easy to create passive income revenue streams. The reality is they're not easy to create anything that's durable, anything that's going to be around for a minute. It's not easy to create. And I think people are waking up to that and seeing that in their, re they're rejecting this um, information. All right, so what it is May, and this is where I'm at with the productivity course, the power of productivity course, which gives you framework, skill sets, and a methodology to get things done. Now, why is this important? I did many, many courses, and I had some people who had amazing results, and I had some people who didn't have amazing results. And I was like, why did this person over here have this amazing result, and this person over here did not have this amazing result and it comes back to getting things done building creating all the folks who had these amazing experiences and stuff had businesses already they had started working they had gotten to a point where they had gotten past the heavy lifting and they were able to implement the training that i put out to make their businesses better so this is why i have created the power of productivity course which is three and a half hours. I feel it's gonna be maybe five, maybe six hours, you know, once we put in some additional stuff and then we'll be finished with that and then we're gonna start with the ne next course. So what you wanna do is go ahead and get into the power of productivity because there's things you need to buy, there's things you need to start working on, there's things you start need to start doing and then get yourself ready because we have a lot of training that's going to happen the rest of this year we're going to get into a lot of things and this is part of the revamping the re-edification we're going to get into a lot of different things so to enjoy the early student pricing discount go ahead get into the power of productivity course right now and i will see you guys in the next video